we're back here with another episode about talking about making a 48. Today, we're actually in Ann Arbor, Michigan with... Jennifer Gettner. And you are the CD producer. I am for Detroit. Yes. How did you get that position? So, I was a competitor for eight years myself. Um, and then when I saw the position that popped open, I was like, should I go for it or not? And I went for it and I got it and I love it. I love what I do. So, it's awesome. Three years now, right? Three years. This will be my third year. Okay. Yep. What got you into filming? So, I have been a movie buff for like as long as I can remember. I mean, I remember as a toddler, my you know, parents taking me to the movies. I saw E.T. and Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. And I always loved movie making. But it really wasn't until I was, like, I just turned, like, 30. I thought, you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to try it. And, um... And at the local community college, they had some video classes, and I took some video classes and eventually went on to Full Sail University and graduated from film school. And oh, so you actually went to film school? I did, yes. So, and now the rest is history. <laughs> wow. So, primarily, what is your job? What, what, what do you prefer to do? Do you want to do you direct? Do you uh, produce? Yeah. What? So, so, my degree is actually in cinematography, and I do okay. love cinematography. I'm also a photographer as well, so I feel like you should kind of go in and in. Um, but I am really I'm primarily a producer, so okay. not just for for the 48, but also in other projects. So, do you prefer to do shorts, or do you like to do features, or what? So, um, I kind of I, I've done a lot of short films, and now I'm kind of working my way. I've got a, a feature that we're going to start filming hopefully this fall. Okay. So I'm kind of making that transition from. From shorts into features. Yeah. Yeah. So at least you're not one of those that's like, oh, I'm going to jump head first into a feature. No. <laughs> you, you watch everybody make their own mistakes. Yes. I mean, I think short films are like the best possible way to get started. I mean, you, it's, it's, I mean, it's a mini movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many things that you can learn from doing something that's shorter and take that with you to doing something that's even bigger than that. There's lots of micro shorts that turned out to be full. Exactly. Like so many. Lights so, out. Yes. Mama. Yes, absolutely. So um, you never know what could come from short. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how many 48s have you done? So I've done eight, eight 48s. Okay. So I think six of those were here in, in Detroit. And then two, I did uh, two of the horror projects in Cleveland. Okay. Yes. And that's how you kind of got started in your, with being in use of it, right? Yes, a little bit, yeah. So, like, right after that, so my last 48 would have been in Cleveland. Okay. Yeah. So, have you won any, like, is your, a team that you've been on won, like, the whole thing? Have you gone to film a Palooza with your team? No, no. I've not gone with, uh, with a team. Um, I, the best I think we did was actually our first year in Cleveland. Um, so we won um, best editing, best writing, um, nominated for cinematography, and then also we won best sound. Oh, good. So the best. That's, that's quite a list of awards. Yeah, yeah, in Detroit we were, you know, we did pretty good. Like best in genre, we get best sound. Um, I think I got best prop one year, so that's always. You ever <laughs> that's won always the prop it was um, nail clippers, I believe. Huh. So, yeah. <laughs> Is there a genre that you've always wanted to, to choose, to like, but you, you've never picked it yet? So, for the longest time, I wanted found footage. And eventually, we got it. I, I got it for a horror um, in Cleveland. Yeah. Um, and the last movie I did for the 48 was a found footage. But I, so, for years, because it was, I, you know, found footage, I think, was even a category for the summer 48 mm -hmm. and I just wanted it so bad and then we finally <laughs> I finally got it for my last 48. <laughs> Which one do you dread? Um well I think for the longest time the scary one was you know western or musical <laughs> um and one year we got western or musical Did you? <laughs> and we made that we made a musical western and it's probably and that's the one we won best rap for okay um and I love that it's still one of my favorite movies because we wrote all the music like like Friday night into Saturday, like it was all original music. The writers just happened to be uh, musicians, so <laughs> it just kind of worked out. And so they wrote music and uh, recorded the music, and it was it was great. It really was an awesome experience. 
So even when you get something that scary, yeah. it you know you can turn it into something that's super positive. I picked fish out of water. Oh I yeah. Didn't. It actually, it turned out really good. Right. So, <laughs> that would just, be one. Just, you're out of your element, you just go with it. You right? do, that's all you can do. You just kind of go and you never know what you're going to get. Like, that's one of the fast parts about just picking a random genre. If you can pick something that feels kind of safe, you know, if you're funny, comedy feels comfortable, you know, horror sometimes can feel very comfortable, drama, but, you know, some of the other categories, it really helps you think outside the box. That's gotcha. Yeah. So, when you get a team together prior to you being the producer. Yeah. Um, do you have a set structure that you would do? Like, uh, I'm gonna set this amount of time to write, this amount of time to film, this amount of time to edit. Like, what is your? How do, how do you work here? So, like, so when I first started, you know, I didn't even know. Like, we just kind of went with it. We kind of felt like, okay, if we write everything on Friday, if we're filming by Saturday, and if we're editing, you know, well into early Sunday you know, we're good. But I had started doing so many 48s that I, when it wasn't 48 season, I started writing like my own schedule. I'm like, okay, if we're right between these hours and this and this and this, like I felt like I had it completely figured out. Mm -hmm. And then when I wanted, I like, I remember sending that out to my team, like the first year that I produced my own game and it, it completely got thrown out <laughs> the window. You know, you start doing stuff and then it's like, oh, let's just, you know, you just have to keep it going, you know? Right. Yeah, but I feel like in my head, I have like the perfect formula for the 48 and the perfect schedule in my mind, so. <laughs> if you could, like a team wanted to do a 48 for the first time, what would be like some do's and don'ts that you would tell them to steer away from or to definitely do because they work or they absolutely don't work? What What's your advice? Well, so since becoming a producer, one of the things that I've noticed about the teams that I find that are really successful, I find they are groups of people who work with one another, even when they're not doing the 48. Like they get together, they talk, you know, about uh, movies. They, you know, um, they're a lot of them are just good friends. And I find that when they go to shoot 48, it's like super cohesive. Now I know that that isn't that isn't possible for everybody. So you always have like people who are just I just want to be a part of the team, and you you know put that and you put them together. I just find that the most successful people at the forty eight are ones who have the opportunity to work together often. Because sometimes you don't even have to say anything; you just kind of know what the other people what they're doing. Um, but I think that I always suggest to everyone I meet who's interested in filmmaking actors and actresses alike as well. I mean, I always tell people to try it out. You have to just try it because it helps you think on your feet. Like if, even if this is the only one you do, like later on when you're filming shorts and feature music videos, you know, like if something goes wrong, you know, you have that experience of thinking outside the box, thinking in a time frame. Right. So it just, um, I think everyone needs to, to try it at least once. And I feel like they're potato chips. You can't just have one 48. You have to get from back to more. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and you don't always. I've been on so many different 48s myself uh, that everything will go perfectly except for that one crucial moment. Yeah. <laughs> Where your camera will die. Yes. Or your battery will die. Like right in that moment. And yes. Then, and then there's no power around. So you have to run here or there to your car to try to charge it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always found like with us, if there was ever an emergency, it was in post production. I felt like, you know, writing would go smooth. Most of the time shooting would go smoothly, but oh man, post production, like you said, power outages, uh, you know, battery loss or something you need. Um, what else? So one year, <laughs> one year we had science fiction. And we did a movie uh, with aliens, and we were actually able to use a green screen. The top that year was apples. Uh, there were apples. apples, and there were there were a lot of us on set too. And we sent someone out to go get apples, and they brought back green apples. And we filmed, and no one thought twice about these green apples being, you know. So when we went into post-production, you couldn't see the apples. Like, that was our prop. 
oh, it like blended completely <laughs> with the screen every time we were trying to key everything out. But that was one of the most tense moments, I think, on a 48 post-production. Like we all were just, our team leader got up in there. He was able to do some things and so you could actually still see the apples as our prop. I have no idea how he did it. But it was, you could hear a pin drop in that room because we were all just like waiting to see if he had done it. Man, what are we gonna what are we gonna do? So post production has been a killer for <laughs> for me. Have you had uh, have you turned one in late? I've never been late. No. I've never been late. Uh, I've been super close. Two minutes seems to be like my number. Two minutes to spare. It's about right. Yeah. <laughs> what about as a producer? People turning them in. Has anybody turned them oh, in? Oh yeah. yeah, that's the worst. I mean. The worst feeling. Like, sorry. It is. It's, it's one of those things like I didn't prepare myself for. Um, I knew it could happen. And then when it did, the first year, I saw my heart went out to, to them. Did they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, yeah. Can you just. Yeah. And we've had, I mean, tear, people are in tears. Like, as they're trying to, like, export, I mean, people are crying and crying. And I just, oh, I wasn't ready for that. I was like, oh, please don't cry. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, I don't think I'll have to worry about that because it seems like you're going to be uploading everything. Else. That will be really nice. Um, that is one thing, like, I always thought for years, if I could change something about the 48, I would be, oh, it'd be so nice if we could just upload, upload everything. So that will be kind of cool this year. Um, but I'm not going to lie, there is something kind of exciting about drop off. Like, yeah. as a competitor and me as producer, like having people come in and, you they're know, all just excited about their film. Oh, they're so excited about their movies. And then the sense of relief, like, and they're so happy after. So I'm going to miss that a bit this year. Um, but I do think, like, uploading, that will be. That would be it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to see how that goes for people. Give them a little extra time. How was your experience on this uh, this, this trial run of this new website? Um, because <laughs> <laughs> you're the first person that I've actually the second person I've talked to. Okay, about this about, about this yeah. Cinema 48. So there's been some uh, you know some kinks that need to be worked out. Um, so I'm definitely hoping that um. Uh, time for everyone's 48 that um, everyone's able to upload uh, problem free. That would be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Now, a lot of people wish that they could actually view the video after they've uploaded it. Because yes. if they turn it in four hours early, they want to make sure that everything looks good yeah. and everything looks okay. Yeah, that would be really a nice option to have. A lot of yeah. people complain about the um, paperwork, uh, they have trouble yes. uploading the paperwork. Paperwork in general has been a complaint mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> so I'm a weirdo who a uh, producer who loves paperwork. Ah. So <laughs> so even if I am like, you know, I'm a team leader or even as producer, I, I love that kind of thing. But most people are like, oh, I hate having all this, but it is really necessary. I mean, it just is. You have to, um, not only us as, you know, 48, we want to make sure everyone's protected. But you, if you're a team leader, really need to make sure that everyone is safe and has their paperwork filled out. It's, it's just part of, you know, it's just part of filmmaking in general. I get it, yeah. yeah. You guys seem pretty strict here. This is the first time I've been in Michigan since every place around here has, you must wear a mask. Like, yeah. That's kind of what we're out here, so. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so we could be mask free. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's interesting. Do you have any um, projects or anything you want to plug that yeah. you're working on or, or future projects? Yeah, for sure. So it kind of seemed like when everything got lifted here for us, which would have been June 8th, okay. um, I was super lucky and got a bunch of like phone calls and emails and messages that day, which was wonderful. So um, it, there's a lot of potential projects coming up for me. Um, so one of the things I'm working on, um, and I think everything is primarily I would be producing. Um, so we're working on a like a reality uh, paranormal oh. show, which is um, exciting and kind of in the works. Um, I actually am going to be producing a podcast, like a true crime podcast. Okay. Um, and then the feature film that I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, everybody stays healthy. Um, we will start shooting in, in the fall, and that that one is called Angie, and it's a, it's a horror film. Nice. Really horror film. So, yeah. Where are you filming that? 
So what that could be kind of the Detroit area, um, maybe a little bit here in Ann Arbor. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, what about social media? How would people be able to see maybe some of the films you did or some of the work you've done, or maybe you have an official website? Or yeah. Like so um. So photography um, work. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, you can see a lot of my photography on Jennifer Gander Productions. Okay. <laughs> And then um, a lot of my video work is on Vimeo. So I do my own channel under Jennifer Gettner and on okay. Vimeo. Um, and then I even find me on Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, I think I'm I heart Jen, Jen. So, <laughs> um, and then yeah, Facebook is under Jennifer Gettner. Yeah. And I've got all kinds of, I've got videos, uh, photography stuff on there as well. So, yeah. I'll put all those in the links below there. Awesome. Okay, very good. All right, well, thanks for. Yeah, thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you.